What's up guys? Welcome to Transformation. My name is Patrick Blake Leeper and I was born without legs. I was destined to spend my life in a wheelchair, but with the right mindset and with sheer determination, I now hold eight Paralympic track and field medals. Not stopping there, I'm now on a quest to become the fastest man alive and to inspire others to overcome their own limitations. Today, I'm meeting Audra. After her son was diagnosed with brain cancer, she refused to sit aside. So she became a revolutionary in cancer treatment for not only her son, but for the world. Today, Audra is spreading her message of change through her nonprofit, Max Love Project. Welcome to Transformation. Welcome to Transformation. I just wanna say thank you so much for being here today, um, we'll jump right into it. What was your life like before your son Max was diagnosed? I had an overwhelming sensation that we we were fortunate. You know, gratitude, trying to find presence in every day for seeing the beauty in what we have. But also there was a searching, and, and I know I was trying to find a greater purpose. Where would my creative energies intersect with helping people? So I was looking for more meaning. Right, and at what point did you see any signs that something was wrong with your son? Yeah, the first thing that I noticed was that he had early morning headaches and vomiting. We were told it was a sinus infection right. multiple times. And I knew that I had a sinking feeling though, it's not right, it's just not right. You're right, that mother's intuition, instinct. right? Yeah, yeah, mother's instincts. Mothers always know right. Can I can I speak to that for a second? Yeah, I mean, please do. All please. the moms out there, you have this instinct, you know, and you might think you're crazy, but you are not crazy. You know, I knew when Max was a baby that something was going to happen. You felt it, so so you knew something was going on, and you, and you guys went to the hospital, and Max ended up in the ICU. Um, what was the diagnosis that the, that the doctors came and kind of kind of hit you with? So the first thing that happened was we finally got Max in for a diagnostic MRI after months and months and months of challenges. Before Max was even out of sedation, the doctor called me back and he said, your son has a life-threatening condition and he has water on the brain, we have an ambulance waiting and you need to go to the hospital and he needs immediate surgery. What was going through your mind as a mother knowing that your child had to go through this? Your stress hormones set in and you just start to focus on the kid, you know, to focus on that story you're gonna tell yourself. What's gonna be empowering right now? So it was this oscillation between devastation to sucking it all up so that Max felt safe and secure that everything was going to be okay. When Max was, you know, first diagnosed, how long did they, they give him to live, you know, on, on the first go around? Uh, there's usually a 15% uh, five-year survival rate. And in the lowest grade part, about 60% five-year survival rate. We hit five years on August 5th. Wow, wow. Yeah, the real game changer for Max was that we had a sugar-free, whole foods-based diet. And a year and a half after he began chemo, um, he went off chemotherapy for a little while, and then we saw disease progression at that point. So things were not slowing down for him, they were speeding up, actually. We initiated a therapeutic ketogenic diet at that point. Three months later, disease progression halted, and for two and a half years after that, he did have radiation eight months later, and two and a half years after that, we saw disease regression even in a space where we were told radiation was only going to stop new growth. That's all it would do. Right. Combined with the therapeutic ketogenic diet, we saw regression after that, which was amazing. Right. So with the success, you would, I mean, you would have to give it to the diet, but how would you convince the medical field? <laughs> Our oncologist will say there's no way you can prove that. And she's right. Can't prove that was it. But every single one of her patients now, she tells them to cut the sugar. And to the to a good amount of those brain tumor patients, she asks them to do the ketogenic diet. We've had a lot of help. Our, our friends at the Epigenics Foundation have been there to help us um, from the very beginning with that. And we feel completely empowered to have a way of managing this disease. When you look at our healthcare system, you know, we got our medical teams, we're doing the best they can do with their training and their resources. And what they're not trained in is food, nutrition, wellness at all. And we found that we could 
partner with our team to help families around the world find access to how they're inherently empowered to help their kids, not just in the hospital, but at home. Right. And and so that kind of what sparked, you know, here you are in the situation, the Max Love Project. And yeah. so like, can you, can you kind of just elaborate on that? It just Max Love Project started as a service project, a, a, an engagement opportunity for Max and I. But as we started to see Max's outcomes change directly correlated to what we are doing for him with complementary medicine, and we saw the void as well, we said, we got to step up even more. Like, let's make this nonprofit organization into something, you know, even bigger. And we took the next step. With the Max Love Project, what do you see the ultimate goal? Like I'll change healthcare for kids. That's, you know, that's it. So one of the things we're working on is developing a clinic. And this is a this is a partnership with a, a number of doctors, clinicians, and other people working to start a clinic. And so a lot of our work will continue to be advocacy oriented, but also a good amount of fundraising to get families the care they need and to try to grow this movement. Wow, that's that's amazing. From the time that Max was diagnosed to to now, you know, how do you see that your life has changed? Max has saved my life. Being being a cook and an educator, I mean, I a lot of the things you don't learn about are, are wellness strategies. And I have found out that I have really high blood pressure and hypothyroidism and on and on and on and on. And if it wasn't for Max's journey, I think today I would be probably obese, diabetic, with critically high blood pressure, and I wouldn't know why, and I wouldn't know what to do about it. What does the future look like for you? Like, what do you, what's next? We have Keeping Max Love Project moving forward, you know, one day at a time. We have some great programs here. We have a broth bank. We deliver therapeutic, organic bone broth to families in the hospital. I don't know if you know this, but what they have in the hospital, what they give them is uh, bouillon. It's made of high fructose corn syrup. And so we provide one of the only nutritious resources for them. So, I mean, we have these these little wonderful programs that serve hundreds of families locally, and we need to scale that up. So I'm definitely feeling that. I gotta keep pushing that forward. Max is truly lucky to have a mother like you. And, you know, looking at, looking back on my life and the things, you know, I endured, you know, growing up without legs. And you know, one of the main reasons I'm here today is because of my mother and how strong-willed she was. She wouldn't take a no for an answer, yeah. right? And that's so important. I see that in you, like you never took no for an answer, you fought for him, right? When nobody else will fight. What advice would you give to those mothers who may face some similar challenges that, that you have faced in your life? Don't make perfect the enemy of the good. I think moms go through every single day saying, I'm not enough. I am not enough, but you are so much more than enough. And give yourself that grace because we are going to make mistakes throughout every day. We are never gonna be perfect parents. And when you're parenting a child with illness, that's only compounded. We're gonna learn that we did 50 things wrong at some point on our way to right. And it's okay, but don't beat yourself up. Audrey, thank you so much for your time and just your mindset is amazing. You are one awesome mom, <laughs> holy smokes. Likewise, thank you, it's been a pleasure. What I learned about Audra's story is giving yourself grace and allowing yourself to have a few imperfections. And when you fall down, how important it is to get back up because you learn so much about yourself when you keep fighting.